Okay, so I wanted to show you um, what I've been working on over the last month or so. And this is what I presented at Max during the sneaks. Um, but we only had five minutes and I kind of ran out of time. Uh, so I didn't get to show everything. So basically what I've built is um, a responsive design feature for brackets. Now we already have an awesome responsive design tool called Reflow. But it's particularly targeted at designers. Um, for developers who are doing responsive design, you most of the time are going to need to hand edit you know, at a low level, your CSS. And, you know, you might have to be doing all these weird little tricks in order to get things to work. So the great thing about brackets, it's built entirely in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. So um, if I want to completely modify the UI here in brackets, it's easy to do because this is essentially just a web page. So I can just uh, set, you know, display none, or I can actually just remove nodes entirely from the DOM. So I have an HTML site here that I'm working on, and this is just a template uh, that I got and removed all of the responsive uh, design stuff from it. And I'm going to launch into what I call responsive mode. Now what that did is immediately it has broken brackets into two panes. Um, one is the brackets editor, which you see below, and then above is a live HTML preview window showing me what my site currently looks at, uh, looks like. And also we have um, some tools here that are going to allow me to actually create um, a responsive website. Now one of the things you'll notice is it's actually created a new file for me called mediaqueries.css, which is currently empty. But this file is what is going to essentially aggregate um, all of the things that I do while I'm in responsive mode. Okay, let's first just look at the website really quick. So um, this is a fixed width site, obviously. So if I take the ruler and start adjusting it, we can see once I get to that fixed width, it, the site just gets cut off. So this doesn't have any responsive uh, features whatsoever. Now what I want is to keep that fixed width. Um, so you know, if I'm on a huge monitor, I don't want it to ever be larger than this. But when I get to, let's say, this point, I now want to change into a, a fluid or percentage-based um, layout. So I'm going to add a new media query by clicking on the plus icon. And you can see that's using the same design language uh, that's inside of Reflow, um, because th using this color system uh, is a really good way, um, uh, once we start adding multiple media queries, to know, um, you know what you're actually affecting when you make changes. All right, so I'm going to open my code back up, and I'm just going to close the project panel so I have some more room. Now I am recording this at 720p, uh, so you know you're usually going to have more resolution than what you're seeing here, um, but I should be able to make it work. So what I want to do is to change the width of my main content div. So how do I actually select things here in responsive mode? Well, very similar to the the developer tools and browsers, I have an inspect mode here, which if I turn on, we can see that the actual whole web page has gone dark. And whatever I roll over is actually revealed. Um, and I'm actually just using a div with a huge outline um, and doing a transition just so we have a nice kind of transition between the different uh, elements that we're rolling over. Now when I click on an item here in inspect mode, um, you're going to see when I do that, the, the specific line of code um, that is controlling the element that I clicked on is scrolled into place automatically for me right into the center and is highlighted. Um, and this is a huge time saver because I don't have to go and look for, okay, where, is, where in this code is this image actually done? So I can continue to click here uh, to move to different um, elements. Now this actually works both ways. So if I'm in inspect mode, and if I go down in my code, say to right here and click on an item, we can see that the live preview uh, um, HTML has actually scrolled to that element uh, that I clicked on and brought it into place so I can immediately see um, any changes um, you know, when I make them. But let's focus on that main content div. So if I come up here, uh, that's it right there. So I'm going to click on it. 
And now I'm going to do a CSS quick edit, which already exists in brackets, but it essentially allows me to um, quickly inline edit some CSS. So I'm going to hit the same keyboard shortcut, Command E, and it's now opened up a quick edit. Now this it's a little bit different in a couple of ways. First, you can see we have that media query bar here to remind me that any changes that I make in the CSS um, in this quick edit are only going to be applied to this particular media query. Also, the um, actual rules that are displayed here are different. So um, I'm going out and getting all of the CSS rules that are currently being applied to this element and displaying them. Um, so that's a very uh, important thing to note is that it's just showing you the ones that are actually active right now. So I'm going to change it from 1120 pixels to 90%. And now you can see it's reacted automatically uh, when I did that. Now another thing that it's done is it's actually um, highlighted that line. So if I come back in here, I know that on this blue media query, I've already set the value. And this will also um, come into play when we do inheritance of media queries, which I'll show you um, in a minute. All right, so I'm going to come out of there, and let's look at the results of, of moving to percentage. So you can see here we snap. Now we're starting to go in, into percentage mode. Now there's a couple of problems already. First of all, this text is a little bit big. And then my grid has broken from four into three. So I have some work to do here. So um, let me bring my code up. And I'm going to go into inspect mode. And I'm going to click on this main text uh, div here. Go into a quick edit. And what I want to do is to change the font size from 120 to 100% like that. And let me get out of that. So that now fits properly. And now we want to focus on our grid. So what I want to do is to select this first item and click and I'll go into a quick edit. Now if we look closer at this quick edit, you'll notice that there's something, well, a little bit strange in that it's gallery item nth child 4n plus 1. So that is essentially a CSS selector that targets only the first item in every row and adds a clear both into them so that it actually, um, so we have nice clearing rows of items. But I don't want to change the width of these items using this selector because it's only going to apply to that first one. So here's where this little arrow comes into play. So this isn't like a bug. This is actually, when I click, this is a select box showing me all the available selectors um, that can target this element. And they're sorted by how specific they are. So if I change this to dot gallery item, now whatever I change is going to take effect on all of the gallery items. So I'm going to change it to 23% like that. So now if we look at this, um, as we go from a fixed width to a fluid width, now we have a nice scaling fluid grid of items. So now we can keep moving forward. So let me get this back up a little bit here, and we'll start moving this down. Now immediately I can see I'm going to have a problem here. Uh, this bottom paragraph of text just really doesn't fit anymore. Um, so what I'm going to do is to create a new media query. And again, I'll go into inspect mode, click, do a quick edit. I'll just change display um, from block to none, like that. And again, I could have chosen paragraph, um, but then all of the paragraphs would have disappeared. Okay, so this is looking good now, and we can keep moving along. So I bring it down, and again, we see this text now is, is starting to get a little bit big. Um, also, this image is, is a little small. Um, so what I can do is to add another media query here, and we're going to focus now on this image. Now, one of the things you'll notice is I'm wasting all of this screen space here. So I can switch into vertical layout mode um, by clicking here, changing the layout. So now I'm in um, essentially a vertical split so I can, uh, have, I can see more of my live preview. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is to go into inspect mode, click on this image, but we actually want to highlight this um, image rotator uh, class right here. And I'm going to do a quick edit on this, and we can see it's set at 60%. Well, I'm going to change it to 100%. And then I'm also going to go down to my main text div here, go into a quick edit. Now here you can see the actual inheritance so this is showing me that on the blue media query that we created, um, we've actually changed the font size to 100%. And that is actually um, being inherited by this media query because we're just using um, uh, you know, one style of media query. We're not doing min width and max width here. Um, so this is a really helpful thing to let you know where this has been set in other media queries. But I'm gonna change this width to be 100%. And I want to change the margin top to 15. And we can see as we make these changes, the highlight and the element are actually um, kind of animating um, where uh, they should go. OK, so now I have this. This is looking good. Um, we have our grid, which is nicely adjusting. And we can keep going. Now here, you can see there's going to be a problem because my navigation is going to essentially um, bump into my logo. So I want to add another media query, and I can just click on the media query to snap my code editor over so I have as much room as possible. Again, I'm going to go into inspect mode and just click on one of these. Now this, I actually want to go to this nav bar um, div here, which contains my nav bar. I'm going to go into a CSS quick edit. Now we have a lot of properties here, but we actually just want to add a property which is display none, like that, which gets rid of it. Now, the reason we did that is because I have another um, navigation system here, which is just a select, an HTML select um, box. So this is what we actually want to display. So I'll do a quick edit here, change display from none to block. And now you can see I have this select box, um, which is going to be a lot more mobile friendly. Now, another thing you'll notice here is that the grid is starting to get a little small at this point. Um, so what I can do is to let me go into a quick edit again, uh, select one of these items, do a quick edit. And here it's showing me that um, on the blue media query, we actually set this these um, items to 23%. Well, here we want to override that and we want to set them to 48% like that. And now you can see we have a grid of two rather than four. So you can see the basic workflow here. Let me actually go back to um, this mode and we can take a look at our full set of media queries and what they do. So here we have a fixed width site and at this point we actually move into a percentage based site so our grid is, is nicely adjusting. Now when I get to this media query, I'm basically um, getting rid of that bottom paragraph. Keep going along, and now I switch. So the image is actually, uh, and the text are spanning 100%. And finally, on this one, I'm changing from a grid of four to a grid of two. And I'm also changing the navigation into that mobile uh, navigation. And I could continue working on this and, uh, you know, uh, adjusting it even more than what I've done. So if I go to the code here, um, if we look at, uh, let's take a look at, at this gallery item. So if I click on this and do a quick edit, here we can see that it's showing me that the width is 23%. Um, if I click on another media query, we can see that the actual uh, query actually updates itself. So I can continue clicking. And here you can see we've actually uh, changed it to 48% on this particular uh, media query. So again, I can toggle through these and it's showing me um, the actual uh, changes that I've made for all of the different queries. So this is great, you know, but what has it actually done behind the scenes? So let me just increase the size of my code editor here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up the project panel. Now if we look in the media query CSS file, 
Well, here are all of those changes that I've made um, captured here um, in this separate media queries file. Um, so we have all of the actual um, you know, relevant media queries here and all of the changes that I made in each of them. So now I'm ready to include this into my you know, regular, uh, include this at the top of index.html and it's gonna be good to go. So basically that's the feature that I've worked on. Now it's very, uh, it is actually working. This isn't smoke and mirrors, but um, it's definitely uh, not close to being releasable at this point. Um, but I definitely will keep you updated uh, about um, you know, what's gonna happen with this. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.